and welcome back to another video. My name is Jake the Genealogist, and in today's video, we're going to be going over a pretty obscure monarchy, that being the monarchy of the Mosquito Kings. Now, the Mosquito Coast, or the Mosquito Kingdom, uh, was located on the eastern coast of Nicaragua and Honduras, as you can see. And the Mosquito Coast is named after the Mosquito people, who've inhabited the area for many hundreds of years. And no, it doesn't have connections with the pesky insect at all. It comes from the ver name of the very first king of the Mosquito people, some guy named Mesquite. Um, nowadays, most Mosquito, through intermarriage with Europeans, have actually become a mixed race group, with people having a plethora of Central American, European, and even African heritage. Now, the Mosquito were pretty unknown to history until about the early 1600s. By then, the Providence Company of England was actually near the, to the coast, and they found the king at the time, whose name is Unknown Son, and they got him to visit the future Charles II. Now, that son was named Oldman, an anglicized name, of course. Now, during this meeting, they effectively established a direct rule over the Mosquito Nation and made it a de facto British protectorate. Now, Oldman succeeded his father by around 1650 and became the first Mosquito King known to history. Now, according to most sources, Oldman had a pretty long and steady reign, and he was succeeded in around 1686 or 1687 by his son, Jeremy I. Now, Jeremy also, in turn, had a pretty long reign. He didn't know any English, but he was ordered by the commission to protect any Englishman from the Jamaican governor for some reason. And, um... Wikipedia also notes that he was likely the last fully indigenous king of the Mosquito, and that the ones who followed were all descendants of African slaves. But that doesn't exactly explain the genealogical link between them. Dealing with the discrepancy is not really an easy task, but I'm willing to say that the genealogical relationship is true in this case. And that Wikipedia is just pulling stuff out of their ass. Um, anyways... <laughs> Jeremy's son is likely another king named Jeremy, um, however, the time of death and succession is a little bit unclear. Most pinpoint it, though, around 1718. Now, Jeremy II died after a pretty short reign in 1729, and he was succeeded by his brother Peter. Now, at the time of Peter's death in 1739, the throne actually jumped back to his nephew and Jeremy's son, Edward I. Now, during Edward's reign, the War of Jenkins' Ear between England and Spain started, and England really wanted to enlist the Mosquitoes' help in the war, but it never really amounted to anything in the end. Edward died in 1755, and he was succeeded by his brother, George I. Now, during George's reign, the kingdom became more and more divided along the ethnic boundary, with the Mosquito Sambu being the people who were part indigenous and part African, and the Mosquito Tawira being the ones who were fully indigenous. And uh, George likely divided the kingdom into different domains for the different peoples. Now, George steadfastly stuck by England's side when it came to anything from land grants to actually the American Revolution, and he died from smallpox by around 1776 or 7. Now, George was succeeded by his son, George II Frederick. Now, George Frederick was actually educated in England and was officially evangelized by famous abolitionist Olada Ekianu. And because of this English connection, he became a very strong ally, just like his father, for the English in the Americas. He was later said to actually have been poisoned by his brother Stephen in 1801. Um, and Stephen was actually pro Spanish, um, which possibly explains why he killed his brother, and he became an unofficial regent along with a so-called General Robinson for his nephew, one, the young George Frederick Augustus I, who spent uh, much of his regency spending time in Jamaica, actually. So, in 1816, when, Fred, when George actually reached majority, he was officially crowned, Unfortunately, though, because of his unfamiliarity with learning to rule, 
he had no idea of really how to establish authority over the people, and his giving of land grants to random Europeans and his lack of power over his subordinates made his reign a pretty unstable one, and he was killed either by strangulation or assassination, possibly by his own wife in 1824, and he was succeeded by his brother Robert Charles Frederick. Now, Robert become, became much more successful than his brother. He abolished slavery, lowered taxes, and even used in real-life English jury to try criminals in the kingdom. And he was the first king to really become completely anglicized. He apparently spoke very good English, according to author Thomas Young in 1839. And Robert Charles Frederick died in 1842, and he was succeeded by his very young son of only nine years old, George Frederick Augustus II. Now, during George's reign, his power began to become more limited. The Treaty of Managua, signed in 1860, essentially handed over the Mosquito government to the Nicaraguan government, not actually yet a country, and it would become wholly absorbed into the area. And because of this, many thought that he was really just a puppet of the British Empire, and the Mosquito weren't actually capable of any self-governing. Now, George died in 1865 and was once again succeeded by a young boy, William Henry Clarence, only 10 years old, who was George's nephew. And he only gained four full powers um, when he reached majority by 1874. And he died only five years later from poisoning. Now, uh, William Henry Clarence was succeeded by a pretty distant cousin, a descendant of... George Frederick Augustus I, um, and his name was George William Albert Hendy, and the exact connection is still a little bit unknown, um, but we know he was definitely a descendant of George Frederick Augustus. Now, Hendy had a pretty short, unpopular reign, and uh, he died in 1888 and was succeeded by his brother Andrew, who quickly abdicated due to the anger of the people in under a year for his cousin, Another nephew of George Frederick Augustus II, and his name was Jonathan Charles Frederick, and he succumbed pretty quickly to alcoholism within only a year once again, and passed it to his first cousin once removed, the son of William Henry Clarence, and his name was Robert Henry Clarence, and Robert would become the very last Mosquito King. Um, after a very short reign, he was toppled from the throne by 1894 by Rigoberto Cabezas, and the Mosquito semi-autonomous kingdom was completely absorbed into Nicaragua, thus ending the kingdom. Robert still ruled unofficially until 1908, 1908 when he died, um, but he left no male heir. Now, nowadays there are several claimants that I didn't really add to this tree. Uh, after Robert Clarence's death, the next in line was Robert Charles Frederick's uh, son, Robert Frederick, very old guy, who uh, died sometime after 1928. Um, another claimant later on was Norton Cuthbert Clarence in 1977, but his connection is pretty unproven. Um, now, this monarchy... Most people don't really know about it um, in the end, but um, hopefully by putting out this video, I'll raise more attention to the Mosquito people, because um, there's still plenty of Mosquito people living in Nicaragua nowadays. Um, there's a couple thousand of them, I believe, and most of them are still pretty poor, just like they were back in the day when they actually had a real-life kingdom. And um, that about ends off this video. So if you enjoyed, please be sure to subscribe and like, all that funny business, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.